What's up everybody of the Mangus, you were awesome, and today I want to talk about what Team Soul Eve can improve in Paragon the Overprime before early access on December 8th. This video is going to be heavy on criticism and constructive feedback, so I want to say right out of the gate that I had an absolute blast playing the final beta test, and I'm very much looking forward to being able to play this game daily when early access is available. There were problems though, and I reached out to you, the community, to help identify some of the things that could make the game a little bit better. I did a poll asking how people felt about the game, most people chose the it was good option instead of the it was great option, and there are multiple reasons for that. Game length. Soul Eve wanted their game to be fast paced with plenty of action and team fights. They, they certainly achieved that goal, however it comes at the cost of some games taking for fucking ever. I know people are going to think this is a skill issue, and you could you could certainly end the game quickly if your team was significantly better than the enemy team, but I found that in an uncoordinated environment, equally skilled teams, be that equally bad or equally good, would have games that lasted upwards of like 45 minutes. I don't think this is a good thing, especially with how fast-paced Overprime is. Constant team fighting for that long is fucking exhausting. My candidate for the main offender of game extension is the very short respawn timers coupled with travel mode. It was difficult to press the advantage when getting priority after a team fight. You could either attempt to push a lane or take a neutral objective, but no matter what you chose, you could be assured that the enemy team would respawn at full health and mana before you could get halfway through whatever you were trying to do, and then they would use travel mode to quickly counter your offensive. Uh, this was especially annoying when trying to take a major objective like Orb Prime. Unless you had all of the enemy inhibitors down with minion ways pushing the core, an orb prime take was always a risk, especially with the power of that thing, which is, uh, that's a whole different problem that we'll get to later. Comeback mechanics are one thing, but the short death timers coupled with travel mode felt like it punished good gameplay. I personally love travel mode, so I would much rather see them increase the duration of respawn timers instead of getting rid of travel mode. Controller support. While this is a topic that doesn't really affect me, it affects many of you. Overprime did not have dedicated controller support for the game. Yes, you could map your controls out on Steam and use a controller that way, but it's far, far more preferable that Soul Leave institutes their own organic controller support. It's also a step towards eventual console release, and we all know how important that is to the community. We've seen them play the game with a PlayStation controller on PlayStation, and that's awesome, but hopefully they aren't just focusing on controller use for console. Many of you have purchased PCs to play all of these Paragon remakes, and it would be nice if you could use whatever input you prefer. Neutral Objectives This is a topic that you guys actually changed my mind on. At first, I actually liked that taking the Prime Guardian dealt damage to everything on the battlefield. Heroes, towers, inhibs, even the core in some situations. It's a decent answer to the extended game length. However, it was just way too strong, and it kind of felt bad for both sides. There's just something truly exhilarating about pushing with your team to the enemy core. Hell, it's, it's fun for the defending team to attempt and possibly even succeed at defending that push. Just taking Prime and having it do the job for you? That doesn't feel good. You want to see yourself and your team cheering in victory around the core as it explodes, as opposed to everyone sitting in a pit mid-map <laughs> when the victory screen just suddenly pops up. I think there's a pretty simple solution here. Just stop letting Prime Guardian deal damage to the core. Here's a much more controversial take. Stop it from dealing damage to heroes as well. It truly sucked when your team was low on health and resources from battling the Prime Guardian, only to have one person from the enemy team jump in, win the 50-50 smite contest, and then the Guardian damage kills you. Again, you're punishing good gameplay. Bugs. Oh my god, I was shocked by how many bugs were present in this iteration of the game. Uh, there were a few in the last closed beta test they had, but nothing on par with what we experienced in the final beta test. It was everything from Revenant's gun not reloading to just getting stuck inside of a friendly ice wall. I certainly hope everyone was doing their best to report these as they happened because, holy crap, it seemed every hero had something going on. Aurora and Xena were of course the worst offenders with Aurora getting stuck in midair when using Ice Ball and Xena literally breaking the game if she used her ultimate on a dashing hero. But major bugs like that will definitely be noticed by Soul Eve and Fix. It's the minor ones I worry about. Like Xena's charge up attack never seemed to take you where you're supposed to go, and Gideon getting stuck in the field of view meant for torn space, oh, it, 
It was kind of terrible. And then there were melee attacks. I personally didn't experience this much as I rarely played melee heroes, but I've had so many people complain in comments about rubber banding, stuttering, or just straight up displacement when using melee attacks. I do like how they have hit stop animations on melees, but not if the cost is just bugged attacks in general. Bushes! This is my personal bugaboo, and I know many of you don't agree with me on this, but I wholeheartedly feel that you should be revealed when attacking or using abilities in bushes. Having the bushes sway when an enemy moved inside them was nice, but having an ADC chunk at you with full visibility while you have to kind of like guess where they are felt terrible. With the range of Muriel's abilities, you could literally just spend the entire laning phase in your bush supporting your ADC without ever being seen by the enemy duo. Yes, you can ward bushes, but there were four bushes to worry about in duo lane. There is no way you can keep up that kind of coverage when the enemy team is also de-warding you. Crit. Uh, while you often see people complain about ADCs being overpowered, it was the crit damage multiplier that was the real offender here. I think it was something like 2.25 of the normal basic attack, and that's without the sword that gave you extra crit damage. That's insane. ADCs were only considered overpowered because ADC items provided a ton of crit chance, forcing you to focus on items that nullified crit damage instead of building what you prefer. It was far more noticeable on ADCs because they could ping you from afar while any melee heroes building crit had to, they kind of had to at least get into your face to deal damage, and you could be, that could be outplayed a little more easily. You also didn't see many bruiser type heroes building crit because the tank items in the game provided an insane cost to benefit ratio. We got to see in the tournament that late game tanks ruled over prime, not ADCs. So th they need to take a look at that as well. Still need to get a handle on the crit though, holy hell. Ability queuing. I've also seen many people complain that their abilities didn't activate when they hit their buttons. This could be due to any number of things, but I'm pretty sure Overprime doesn't include ability queuing. What I mean by that is, in Paragon, also in Fault actually, you could enter inputs quickly and the abilities would go off in the order of the input. Shimbi's Double Dash is a great example. You should be able to dash and immediately dash again if you right click twice. However, because you couldn't queue abilities, you would dash, have to wait a moment, and then dash again. This is much more noticeable on faster paced heroes, and I certainly felt it on Countess. Poor Countess was kind of a mess in the final beta test, and I think it's mainly because you couldn't insta-unload your entire kit on somebody. There were very small, maybe even maybe even just 0.1 second delays between your dash in, your spin, and your blood wave, but that 0.1 second delay was very noticeable. Experience and gold gain. This is one I personally had a big issue with as a mid support main, however I've talked to others who felt that in-game progression was fine. It felt way too slow to me though. It felt like it took an eternity to get enough gold for three items, and it was common to see people at level 15 35 minutes into the game. ADCs and junglers almost always finish games at max level and full build, but games had to go stupid long for me to do the same. I understand that as a support, that's just that's just common. But as a mid laner or off laner? Yeah, I don't know about that. Hopefully Soul Eve will take a look at the in-game progression when compared between various roles and adjust gold and XP drip accordingly. That's all I have for now. I do want to stress that even though I spent an entire video bitching about what was wrong, I still had fun with the game. I think it's an amazing achievement that you can have this much to improve on, but still have such an entertaining base game. I highly doubt they'll be able to fix all of these problems before early access, but if I had to pick two that I think they should focus on, it's the respawn timers and controller support. The rest is of course important, but I think those two would offer the most benefit to the game and its players. Let me know in the comments below if I missed something, like the video if you enjoyed it, sub for more third person mobile content, but for now this is the Mangoose signing off, you guys have a good one. Mangoose! Shout out to channel members Joshua Ben Noctis, J Man, Jelly Knees, Passion Guard, Malco, Hassan A, Nico, F6, Actual Dez, Dapper Dice, Lionheart Official, Blastoise King, Meow Mix for Men, Surge Ben, Covetous Lemon, Bearded Wolverine, Pizza Face, Pusey, El Draco King, Oda, Soul Reaper, Levy Version 2, Clorox TV, iBloodhunter, and Raven.